Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to talk about DNA organization. Previously I mentioned DNA is primarily located in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. We're going to explore that concept a bit more today. Here is a cartoon representation of DNA which you should be familiar with at this point. If not, check out my previous lessons. I'm going to use a human cell t to uh, make a point here, so please excuse my lack of artistic talent. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just draw a cell. Uh, here we go, let's say this is a cell and we have a uh, nucleus in the cell. Okay, so cell and then we have the nucleus. Um, so in the majority of our cells, we have 23 pairs of DNA strands encoding our genome. So 23 pairs of DNA strands. And this makes up our genome. Now genome just means the entirety of our genetic makeup. Now, what do I mean by 23 pairs? Okay, what do I mean by this? Um, well, we get 23, uh, 23 strands from the female or um, the mother, right? And then 23 pairs from the male, the father. And at face value, if we just look, look at these at face value, these DNA strands are quite long. Actually, if, if you combine... If you link up all 46 pair, oh sorry, all 46 strands, because you know there's 23 pairs, from, 23 from each, uh, the mother and father. So if you take all 46 strands of DNA and you link them together, that's actually over 6 billion base pairs, okay? 6 billion base pairs, okay? And that's a lot. And these DNA strands range anywhere from 1.8, oh sorry, 1.5, I think, to around 8 centimeters in length. And why am I telling you all this? What is, what, what is the point? Why did I even draw the cell? Well, the thing is that these lengths, there's no way it can fit into the cell, let alone the nucleus. Alright, because... On average, the diameter of a nucleus is around like, I don't know, 10 micrometers or so. And so we're talking about a magnitude difference of several thousand, okay, from centimeters, from the centimeters to uh, micrometers. Well, 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 let me ask you a question though. If I had a rope that is 10 kilometers long, and I had to fit it into a tiny closet. What is the best way to put this rope into the closet? Coiling it up or wrapping it around itself will be a great place to start. A great place to start. Basically, we need to condense the rope so we so it occupies the minimal amount of surface area, and that is exactly what DNA does as well. Histones are the key. Histones are proteins that a DNA wraps around, kind of like thread around a spool. Okay, so proteins, uh, we went over, we introduced proteins in the last uh, lesson, so I'm not going to go over uh, too many details of, you know, of, of what a protein really is, but uh, so histones, we have different histones, and they uh, come together to form this octomeric complex. This, is, will, be, this will be the quaternary structure. And uh, what happens is that DNA, because DNA, the phosphate backbone, is uh, negatively charged, right? Because, uh, because of the phosphate backbone, the histone complex uh, on the outer edges have uh, basic, amino acid, basic amino acids. And so their side chains are all very positively charged. And thus, we are able to have this very favorable... Uh, charge charge interaction be charge charge interactions between the uh, DNA and the uh, and the histone complex okay and this whole entire complex can be referred to as a nucleosome so let me just write that down nucleosome which basically refers to the DNA in complex with with the uh, histone proteins 
And so we have DNA wrapping itself around these histones, as you can see here in this picture. Sometimes this is referred to as beads on a string, right, because of how it looks. And this is basically how uh, DNA is able to condense itself. Take note that we also have these H1 histones that are not part of the larger uh, octomeric complex, but these are also very important because they stabilize these, uh, these interactions by binding to the regions where the DNA wrapping starts and ends. And the linker DNA just refers to the uh, DNA between the nucleosomes, right? Between these uh, larger uh, DNA histone complexes. These beads are then further condensed into these highly, uh, highly um, packaged complexes called a solenoid fiber. So solenoid fiber. Okay. So those uh, those beads on the string, they kind of arrange arrange themselves in these arrays to form these fibers. Now, what is the point of this? Well, first of all, this is even you know more condensed than before, and also then these fibers are part of the basic structure of the chromatin. What is a chromatin? A chromatin is a giant bowl of spaghetti noodles. No, okay, uh, I'm just kidding about that. But, but seriously though, okay, so I thought about this and a bowl of spaghetti is honestly the best analogy I got. Let's say this bowl is the nucleus. Whoops, I didn't mean to mark that, but okay. So let's say the bowl is the nucleus, right? And then the noodles inside would actually be the chromatins. So each noodle or chromatin is made out of compact solenoid fibers. And imagine that we have exactly 46, 46 uh, strands in this bowl, or 46 noodles, or 46 chromatins in this bowl. And uh, because again, we get 23 from the father and 23 from the mother, and that makes up our genome, our, our, our genetic material, our DNA. And uh, seriously though, most of the time, um, your DNA in the nucleus does look something like this. It's kind of a chaotic mess of compact uh, solenoid fibers. So if we, if we take one of these noodles and we you know, just kind of magnify it out and stuff, it will look like those, uh, those, uh, those histone complexes all packaged together in those arrays. Um, again, th those are called the, uh, the solenoid fibers. It looks quite messy, right? But the important part of all of this is that we are able to fit your entire genome into a very small nucleus. And your chromatins can be further condensed into something called a chromosome. Um, oh wait, sorry, I f think I forgot to write down chromatin on the last slide. Okay, so yeah, so chromatin. Uh, is basically what was the uh, giant bulbs of uh, giant bowl of spaghetti Okay, so each of those noodles will be a chromatin and this is the state of DNA uh, What it looks like for the majority of time now this chromatin can be further condensed into a chromosome chromosome and this is what we see here and uh, also, this is kind of what we, uh, what you might have heard before, right? The chromosome is kind of a very uh, popular term people throw around, right? So basically, we have the chromatin, as you can see, and it's condensed e even further down into this other, into this structure. And overall, this structure is, you know, much thicker than the chromatin because you know it's it's made out of a, you know, one giant uh, chromatin. And then the overall length is also much shorter. So this is just further condensation. Okay? This process occurs, right? This chromatin to chromosome condensation. This process occurs when your cells are getting ready to divide. And since new genetic material needs to be passed down, the DNA, or chromosome in this case, must also duplicate. And here we have the classic duplicated chromosome. This duplication results in two identical chromosomes, basically. Okay, one here and one here. And these are no longer called chromosomes, right? Go figure. Uh, we, need a t we need to have a term for everything, basically, right? So these uh, duplicated chromosomes are called 
crow uh, chromatids. All right, so we have two chromatids here showing. And I don't want to get into this too much because we're going to be talking about this much more uh, later on in detail, but just some things to point out. Um, the area in which the two chromatids touch is called the, uh, the centromere. Centromere. Um, we have the uh, shorter arms over here, right? Because this section is shorter than th this section down here. So these two areas up here are called the short arms. And then we have the long arms down here. All right. Again, you might be wondering how this duplication actually occur. When does it occur? All that stuff. Uh, that's a story for another time. Um, just, just, just remember for now that this occurs when your cells uh, need to divide. And here we see the 23 pairs of human DNA strands in the chromosome form, right? So one pair is from the father and one pair is from the mother. And these are the chromosomes, of course, highly condensed. And uh, interestingly enough, you can see these are also in the duplicated form. I know it's a little bit hard to tell on this PowerPoint slide maybe, but these, are, these have been duplicated. So we actually have... Uh, two chromatids here, another two chromatids here. So in this pair of chromosomes, we actually have uh, uh, four total chromatids, okay? And the last thing I want to, uh, let me just write that down, four cro, how do you spell this? Chromatids, I think that's it. Okay, yeah, chromatids. And the uh, last thing I wanna mention is the 23rd pair of, uh, of, your, of your chromosome. And this determines your sex, basically, right? Uh, males have a uh, X, XY pair, whereas females have an XX pair. And because chromosomes are so highly condensed, we can actually see them quite clearly under the uh, microscope. And we once again, we have reached the end of today's lesson. The human genome is long, really long. We're talking about 6 billion base pairs spread, ac spread across 46 strands of DNA. And so the 46 segments must be condensed in order to fit into the nucleus. And this condensation involves wrapping itself around histones, forming what we like to call nucleosomes, all right? And then these uh, nucleosomes can be further uh, condensed down into those arrays, forming those uh, solenoid fibers. And then the solenoid fibers are the, basically the backbone or the basic units of the chromatin. And we have the chromatin, the chromosome, and the chromatid. It's a bit confusing. And technically, genetically, they're all, these three terms are, um, genetically, they're all the same, okay? It's just that these are referring to different states of uh, DNA. Um, the chromatins, what your DNA looks like most of the time, again, made out of those uh, solenoid fibers, further condensation during cell division, because we need to pass down we need to pass down the genetic material to new cells, we form chromosomes. And then chromosomes uh, that have been duplicated are called chromatids, okay? And just remember, in human beings, we have 23 pairs of uh, DNA strands, or more conventionally, 23 pairs of uh, chromosomes. Well, thanks for uh, tuning in. In the next lesson, we're going to start talking about what does DNA do? I mentioned a while ago, DNA is the code of life. It determines who you are, but how does it exactly do that? We will begin to, ex we will begin to explore this question next time. See you later, everyone.